Tonight on Hip on the Spot News. We are free to play once again, but this time in a new way with DCS World. The Apache Longmo is in the workshop getting fitted with the latest bells and whistles. We got a Gripen in the air and a Black Hawk roaming around. And we go back in history with World War II free Navy add ons. This and more on how I play. Hello Virtual Pilots, I am Andre Celesti and today we are gonna take a look at the latest news in DCS World. And we start with a stable release of DCS 2.7 and the new free to play system that lets you access all the modules, even terrains, at the same time for 14 days. Once you do that and you test whatever module you choose for 2 weeks sequentially, you will be given another 14 days free trial period for all modules 6 months later. Campaigns are excluded and the offer cannot be available on Steam. And as a newcomer to DCS World, you can benefit from a 50% joining discount on your first purchase, whether you buy one module or the whole library. This is a great move to bring more virtual pilots in DCS World. Last week there was an update from Eagle Dynamics regarding the upcoming module, the Apache Longbow. The AH-64D's flight model is in the making and according to ED, they are progressing very well. With an important note about the external module and cockpit, both being complex and time consuming. They are now developing the flight augmentation system that includes the SCAS and hold modes. As well as working on the engine and related systems and the survivability equipment that contains the radar signal detecting set and the common missile warning system that will be available at launch. Much of the avionics work focuses on the navigation system and TSD pages. All of this is being done at the same time with the IHADS, PNVS and TADS, the area weapon system and rocket management subsystem plus the longbow hellfire module missiles with the AGM 114K. With more information to be released as time goes by, we are looking forward for a great time in the Apache. Now sticking with our rotor enthusiasts, we got some news from Winwing about the upcoming Black Shark Collective system. It seems they are experiencing a little delay for the new gear release, but they are coming apparently in stock on the 18th of July. Our question is, would they ever make something for the Apache? Well, I think they have quite a bit of time to consider that. And lastly, from the world of choppers, it seems that recently somebody is developing a UH-60L Black Hawk mod for DCS World. Around 3 weeks ago, a video appeared on YouTube showing off a startup sequence being performed on a working progress helicopter module that seems to contain a full model clickable or partially clickable cockpit with internal and external sounds and warning tests. No further info about this project, we tried to contact the author with no success until so far. If you know anything, please leave us a comment down below. I also linked the full video in the description. We will keep an eye on this one. Now let's continue and talk about the Community GAS39C Gripen mod for DCS World. Made by a group of enthusiastic players, it features a VSM module with high detail exterior textures and adjusted geometries that align with the real plane. It comes with a Gripen cockpit that will be clickable in the future. Authentic and unique weapons, updated animations with modifications being made to the flight module based on feedback provided by actual Gripen pilots. They are currently tackling major bugs with an upcoming patch and then they will shift to new features for version 2. We link their Discord as well as the download page for the mod. Fox2 Productions provided a unique trailer for the Gripen. I highly recommend you watch it if you're interested. Linked as well in the video description down below. We wish the entire team good luck with the project and we will continue to watch the development as time goes by. Now we know that DCS World offers a wide variety of combat operations with plenty of aircrafts and helicopters already available in the sim and with more to come in the future. And for our pleasure, we get to experience multiple time periods including the World War II setting, either in the Normandy map, the Channel map and plan for the future, the next free Marianas Islands map that will be transformed in order to encompass the new Pacific theater of war. With this being said, there are multiple modules available for the Warbirds enthusiasts, from the iconic Spitfire and Mustang to the German Fokker Wolf 190 or the Russian I-16. We definitely have a few choices to make. Add to that the ground units for the World War II era and the stage is set. But then history reminds us, the war was fought in the air and on the ground, but also in the sea. Now there are a few models available in the sim or with the World War II assets pack when it comes to ships and U-boats, 
or shipping convoy targets and such. But today, I would like to present to you 4 important add-ons that are available now for free containing iconic fleets that roam the waters of World War II. I would like to do a shout out to my dear friend Alaric that provided the information about these packs on our Discord. He was a good reminder for this content that definitely is not new, but it seems it gets updated more often now. But more important, these packages can provide many hours of detailed operations that happened in history. And we start with the World War II Pacific Allied Assets. The Fletcher class. Containing 9 iconic destroyers built by the United States during the World War II, some of them went on to serve during the Korean War and into the Vietnam War. Fletchers had a design speed of 38 knots and a principal armament of 5 5-inch guns in single mounts, with 10 21-inch torpedoes in two quintuplet centerline mounts. The long-range class of ships performed every task that was asked of a destroyer, from anti-submarine and anti-aircraft warfare to surface action. Also available in the Pacific Allied Assets Pack is the Iowa class. Six fast battleships ordered by the United States Navy in 1939 and 1940. Four vessels, Iowa, New Jersey, Missouri and Wisconsin were completed. Two more, Illinois and Kentucky, were laid down but cancelled in 1945 and 1958. But we do have them in the pack even though they didn't see any service. The Iowa class battleships fought in four major US wars. In the Pacific theater of World War II, during the Korean War and the Vietnam War, and after that all four were reactivated and modernized at the direction of the United States Congress in 1981 and 1991. And Missouri and Wisconsin fired missiles and 60-inch guns at Iraqi targets during Operation Desert Storm. Now let's continue with a World War II German naval squadron. Starting with the Deutschland class, a series of three armored ships, a type of heavily armed cruiser built by, and I hope I pronounce it right, Reichsmarine, officially in accordance with restrictions imposed by the Treaty of Versailles. The ships of this class were all stated to displace 10,000 long tons in accordance to the treaty, though they actually displaced somewhere between 10,600 to 12,340 long tons at this standard displacement. The design of the ships incorporated several radical innovations, including the first major use of all diesel propulsion. Due to their heavy armament of 6 28cm guns and lighter weight, the British began referring to these vessels as pocket battleships. The Deutschland class served in operations during World War II in the Atlantic Ocean, Norway to interdict shipping to the Soviet Union and the English Channel. Next up is the Admiral Hipper class cruiser. A group of five heavy cruisers built by the Kriegsmarine in the mid-1930s. The ships took part in the invasion of Norway in April 1940, with sorties also in the Atlantic to attack Allied merchant shipping and operations in the Baltic Sea. Moving on with the German battleship Scharnhorst. She was the lead ship of her class, which included her sister ship Gneisenau, second vessel of her class, and they operated together for much of the early portion of World War II including sorties in the Atlantic to raid British merchant shipping, the German invasion of Norway and patrols in the English Channel. Next up is the Bismarck class battleship. A pair of fast battleships built shortly before the outbreak of World War II, the ships were the largest and most powerful warships built for the German war navy. They were armed with a battery of 8 38cm guns and were capable of a top speed of 30 knots. Bismarck was laid down in July 1936 and completed in September 1940, while her sister Tirpitz was laid in October 1936 and work finished in February 1941. The ships were designed with the traditional role of engaging enemy battleships in home waters, though the German naval command envisioned employing the ships as a long-range commerce raiders against British shipping in the Atlantic Ocean. Both ships had short service careers. Bismarck conducted only one operation, a sortie into the North Atlantic to raid supply convoys sent from North America to Great Britain. During the operation, she destroyed the British battlecruiser HMS Hood and damaged the new battleship Prince of Wales in the Battle of the Denmark Strait. Bismarck was defeated and sunk in a final engagement after three days chase by the Royal Navy. Tirpitz's career was less dramatic. She operated in the Baltic Sea briefly in 1941 before being sent to the Norwegian waters in 1942, where she acted as a fleet threatening the convoys from Britain to the Soviet Union. She was repeatedly attacked by the Royal Navy and Royal Air Force between 1942 and 1944, but she was not seriously damaged in these attacks. In 1944, Lancaster bombers hit the ship with two tall boy bombs, which caused extensive internal damage and capsized the battleship. 
Tirpitz was broken up for scrap between 1948 and 1957. A small note, I didn't include in the list the German destroyer Z-39. It seems a bit problematic to make it work with DCS at the moment. The author has released a beta fix, but we didn't manage to include it in the simulator for now. Allora, tutto bene. Andiamo con uh, with the World War II Italian Naval Squadron. <coughs> Sorry. Featuring the Italian battleship Roma, which was the first Littorio-class battleship of Italy's Royal Navy laid down almost four years after the first two ships of the class. Some small improvements were made to the design, including additional freeboard added to the bow. Although Roma took part in training exercises and was moved to various bases including Taranto, Naples and La Spezia, she did not go in any combat missions as the Italian Navy was desperately short of fuel. Roma and her two sisters were moved from Taranto to Naples on 12 of November 1942 in response to the Allied invasion of North Africa. On 4 of December 1942, the US launched a major air raid on Naples in an attempt to destroy the Italian fleet. Two days later, Roma was transferred with Vittorio Veneto and Littorio to La Spezia, and she remained there to the first half of 1943 without going on any operations. After a series of raids and repair transfers, Roma was deployed as the flagship of Admiral Carlo Bergamini, in a large battle group scheduled to attack the Allied ships approaching Salerno in Operation Avalanche on 9 September 1943. But the news of the 8 September 1943 armistice with the Allies led to the operation being cancelled. The Italian fleet was instead ordered to sail to La Maddalena in Sardinia and subsequently to Malta to surrender to the Allies. While the force was in the Strait of Bonifacio, the strait between Corsica and Sardinia, the German Luftwaffe sighted them. The first attack failed, but the second dealt Italia, ex Littorio, and Roma severe damage. The hit on Roma caused water to flood to boiler rooms and the aft engine room, leaving the ship to limp along with two propellers and reduce power and arc-induced fires in the stern of the ship. Shortly thereafter, another bomb slammed into the ship and detonated within the forward engine room, causing catastrophic flooding and the explosion of two main turret magazines, causing the ship to sink by the bow and list to the starboard. Roma capsized and broke in two, carrying 1,393 men, including Bergamini, down with her. Next of the Italian Navy squadron is the cruiser Raimondo Montecuccoli, part of the third group of Condottieri class light cruisers. They were larger and better protected than their predecessors. Raimondo Montecuccoli entered service in 1935 and was sent out to the Far East in 1937 to protect Italian interests in China during the Second Sino-Japanese War. She was heavily damaged by US bombers in Naples on 4 of December 1942 with the loss of 44 of her crew. She was repaired and after the armistice she sailed to Malta with the majority of the remaining Italian fleet. Lastly, in the Italian pack is the heavy cruiser Duca degli Abruzzi. The cruisers were the final version of the Condottieri class. The armament was also increased by two extra 152mm guns, triple turrets replaced twins in the A and Y position thus making them the most heavily armed light cruisers of Italy during World War II. The machinery was also revised which led to these ships having a slightly slower maximum speed than their predecessors. The ship was completed in 1937 and formed the 8th cruiser division with her sister ship Giuseppe Garibaldi. She fought in the Battle of Calabria, Battle of Cape Mataban and on the 24th of September 1941 she was part of the fleet that attempted to intercept the convoy Halbert headed to Malta. She was interned by the Allies after the Italian armistice and later served in the South Atlantic in operations against potential German raiders. And we end with two mighty ships, part of the Imperial Japanese Navy, the battleship Yamato and her sister Musashi, the heaviest and most powerful armed battleships ever constructed. Displacing 72,800 tons at full load and armed with nine 46 cm Type 94 main guns which were the largest guns ever mounted on a warship. Named after the ancient Japanese Yamato province, the battleship was designed to counter the numerically superior fleet of the United States, Japan's main rival in the Pacific. She was laid down in 1937 and formally commissioned a week after the Pearl Harbor attack in late 1941. Musashi took over as the combined fleet flagship in early 1943 and Yamato spent the rest of the year moving between the major Japanese naval bases in response to American threats. The only time Yamato fired her main guns at enemy surface targets was in October 1944 when she was sent to engage American forces invading the Philippines. 
During 1944, the balance of naval power in the Pacific decisively turned against Japan. And by early 1945, its fleet was much depleted and badly hobbled by critical fuel shortages in the home islands. In a desperate attempt to slow down the Allied advance, Yamato was dispatched in a one-way mission to Okinawa in April 1945, with orders to beach herself and fight until destroyed, thus protecting the island. The task force was spotted by US submarines and aircrafts, and on the 7th of April 1945, she was sunk by American carrier-based bombers and torpedo bombers with the loss of most of her crew. This pack is a blessing for mission makers and naval operations involving these magnificent models. There are some limitations and more information is available in the links I provided in the video description. Dear virtual pilots, that's it for this episode, hope you liked it and if you find the video informative, please leave us a like as it helps the YouTube algorithm and subscribe for more news on your favorite simulators and games. I am Andre Celesti, reminding you to fly safe and I'll see you next time.